So thank you everyone for joining us this Saturday morning. Um, as, as of course, you're all here for a singing workshop, but just to begin, we'll give you all a little intro about Ink Movement. So Ink Movement was established in 2012 and it's a saga and we're a youth-led nonprofit dedicated to promoting the arts. And our main goal is to just engage you through all of our initiatives and foster the arts within our community through workshops like this one. Yeah. Um, and of course, you've all probably learned about Eliza um, through her Instagram, but here's a little intro to her. Uh, so her music is the perfect blend of orchestral purity with modern pop tones and also melody. And she's a Canadian recording artist from Toronto and has been recording music for past 20 years. And she has two albums and nine singles out available on all digital platforms. You can check her out on Spotify. Um, and her single featuring songs for reads, Love's Destiny and also Crying to the Moon, which you listened to at the start of this workshop, um, were also featured on radio stations in Canada and the UK. So that's our little introduction. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to Elisa to get started. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope uh, you are all doing well this uh, cold Saturday morning. <laughs> uh, first off, I'd just like to thank uh, Inc. Movement uh, Mississauga for having me here and to speak to you all. Um, this is uh, so great. Uh, I love to share my story and try to inspire all the young uh, artists out there. Uh, so uh, I've been singing uh, for over 20 years and uh, I actually started uh, opera training at the age of 15. And uh, what got me inspired was uh, when I went on a school trip uh, to see the uh, Phantom of the Opera. And uh, I think it uh, got everyone excited in the whole class because it was such an amazing production and that I end up uh, getting the soundtrack and I memorized the whole production. And then my mom and dad, they heard me singing in my room <laughs> and they said, we're gonna put you in singing lessons. So, um, and that's what they did. Uh, and uh, so I, th that's pretty much where it all began. And then as I was, you know, getting better and stronger, I, um, uh, I started singing for events and uh, weddings uh, at the church and stuff like that. Um, so, and I also uh, started to teach uh, singing um, at a music school in Toronto for uh, a few years. And that was a lot of fun uh, teaching young uh, children and uh, uh, singing and piano. So uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, what else? Um, I also recorded my very first uh, EP album at, uh, when I was about 20 years old. And no one really knows about that now. Uh, um, <laughs> but um, back in the day, there was no uh, social media. There was no uh, Spotify or Apple Music. So um, I, only, I only have the, the album on a CD. <laughs> So, uh, but I, uh, it's been about 24 years, so I actually have a surprise coming. So if you follow me on all social media, you can uh, find out what the surprise is about this album. Uh, so yeah, I recorded my first album. Uh, it was just an EP of uh, opera and uh, musical theater and some uh, Italian uh, traditional songs. So. And uh, after all that, I, you know, while in college, uh, I, I didn't take any music courses in college. I, I, I ended up taking business and, um, and then, but I was still singing and doing uh, events and stuff like that. So, uh, but then it, it wasn't quite enough to, you know, make a living. So I end up working in the corporate world. <laughs> business corporate world. And I uh, did that for over 10 years. Uh, still kind of singing on the side. It kind of just became a hobby. I stopped the teaching because I started, uh, I, I had a nine to five job. And but and then I ended up getting comfortable with that. And uh, because it was good money. And uh, I thought that I was going to do that for the rest of my life <laughs> and you know retire with this big uh, Canadian corporate company and uh, I end up getting married and uh, I bought a house and uh, and then 
Um, then I end up having uh, kids. So, <laughs> and then once I had the kids, I pretty much stopped singing because my kids, they, you know, th they were my priority and uh, I had to stop. I was still working full time though uh, at the office and um, I stopped singing for a good six years. And um, I kind of missed it, but, uh, you know, I didn't really want to give it up, but I didn't know what to do. Well, you know, my kids were my priority. I had to raise my family and, uh, you know, and, you know, have a, a good income, you know, coming in to help support. So, um, but then uh, in 2014, uh, I, the company that I was working for made some big changes and I was impacted and I got laid off. So um, I was really sad about that. I thought it was uh, the end of the world and uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I end up staying home and not going back to work uh, because I have a son who's on the autism uh, spectrum. And uh, I thought staying home with him would, would benefit him and it did. And it also benefited me. <laughs> um, it was a blessing in disguise because then I found music uh, again. Uh, it all came back to me. And uh, I was like, oh my goodness, I can start singing for events and I can stay home, take care of my family at the same time. And that's what I did. Um, and I started uh, a business. Uh, I started uh, uh promoting myself as a singer and who sings for all types of events, uh, special occasions, and I was getting hired. I was doing pretty well. I uh, took an entrepreneurial course and I uh, got a website going and then, uh, yeah, started uh, becoming more active on social media, which was a lot of fun and uh, I absolutely love it. And um, then, uh, I believe it was 2017, 2018, I decided to record my second album. And that's what I did. I, uh, it, it was amazing. I did uh, another EP with about six, seven songs. It was a mix. It's a mix of um, uh, opera and uh, musical theater, as well as some uh, pop. And uh, it was really exciting to get back into the studio after all these years and just get back into the music business. So, and then I realized that this was what I wanted to do. And uh, so I did just that. Uh, I found an amazing producer and uh, he worked with me along the way and he helped me grow. And, uh, and then being on social media as well uh, also made me grow and as an artist. And um, uh, so now, uh, after recording my second, my second album, I, uh, started, uh, doing my own shows, which was absolutely incredible. We booked a, a theater, we sold tickets, we, uh, advertised it on social media, on community, uh, uh, newspapers such as, uh, Snapped. And so the first show was actually in Mississauga at the, um, Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Uh, my Apprentice Theater. And uh, it was such a great show. And then I ended up doing another one in 2019, as well as recording my first Christmas album. <laughs> and, uh, and then COVID hit. <laughs> so uh, I had other shows and other projects that I wanted to, to work on, but it, it all came to a stop. But because I was still active on social media and I met new people, uh, you know, when I was doing my shows, um, I ended up recording my first original song, uh, which is uh, Crying to the Moon. And, uh, and then I was doing music videos and uh, I did a second original song. And during the pandemic, I found some workshops that were... Um, available uh online for songwriting and i started that and uh it, the whole it was even though we were you know in lockdown and stuff it was still i was still gr grateful to be able to you know release music and make the music videos and and start songwriting um songwriting was it, it is amazing i never thought that i would uh 
find myself doing that. But uh, as I was growing into the music industry and, and recording, especially, I learned that singing your own stuff is better, is cheaper, <laughs> because you have, to, if you do a lot of more cover songs and sing and sing with tracks, it, it becomes a little bit more uh, costly because of the royalties. So uh, what else? Um, yeah, and like I said before, I was singing in more opera, uh, but um, after I sang, after I recorded my second album, I slowly started moving into the pop genre, and which I found I got more, um, more uh, attention and more of the fans started to enjoy that a little bit more. So uh, that's when um, I decided to, to, to sing my first original song, uh, Cry to the Moon. I also did a remix of that song, um, and all of it is uh, available on on all the major uh, platforms. So, uh, what what else? Uh, how are we? All, how are we for time, Kathy? Um, did you want to answer that, Clara? <laughs> Yeah, um, so it's 11.16 now, but I was wondering if you wanted to share maybe a couple like singing techniques or tricks. Oh, yes, know. yes, yes. Let's do that. Okay, so um, I've been taking, like I said, I've been taking lessons for many years. And the first thing that we um, would do during the lesson is vocal warm ups. Now, I know a lot of uh, people I know from teaching experience, uh, a lot of the young kids never really like that. They just wanted to go right into the singing, but I'm like, no, we got to start warm ups. So uh, a few of them I would like to share with you that I've uh, done over the years. So I would start off with uh, just the basic three notes. So on all, so you can all, you know, sing along with me. So we can start um, on the middle C. I'm just going to play the note on my piano here. So we're on key. So we can start ah, and then slowly go up the scale. Ah, and at the same time, keep your shoulders down and just relax your, your jaw. Ah, ah, notes um on the same on the same vowel on the same vowel and uh so slowly on all as well and remember just relax your your uh jaw and keep your shoulders down and remember to breathe through your diaphragm so let's do that ah, 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 ah. Now you can also change it to a different vowel on like E. So let's try that. E. 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 
Okay, uh, and next one we can do is an arpeggio, so which is three notes, but it's one note, uh, you, we skip the second note, or we, we, we go every other note, so just like this. So, oh, 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 And uh, another one that I found um, a lot of fun and it really helped with uh, the breathing technique is a short note, so staccato. So, um, so uh, you can do it on a, on a, a ha or on a he. So ha 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 ha. become um, uh, a little bit uh, tiring because you're really stretching your diaphragm. It's like you're doing an ab workout. <laughs> but uh, they are good. I, I do recommend to do those uh, to help with your breathing. And then there's so many um, various uh, warm ups that you can do. So even with the staccato, you can also sing the legato notes, which we were doing at the beginning. So you can combine the two. So he ha 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 Uh, a couple of them, sometimes my, I remember my teacher would make me do some crazy stuff that was very tiring, but don't worry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> uh, but uh, also a good one is to sing the whole scale, which is uh, eight notes uh, going up and going down. And... Remember to take a nice breath because you're singing eight notes up and eight notes down. So let's try that again. Ah. just learning uh, to sing, it's good to uh, spend at least uh, five to 10 minutes every day uh, vocalizing. 
And if you're uh, doing a, a, a performance, uh, if you have a gig, uh, an event to sing for, it's good to, to warm up beforehand uh, before you start performing. So it's just like when you exercise, there's always stretching involved first and uh, before you get into the- Yeah, into the, the routine. So, and uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. <laughs> Uh, so I think, are we open for questions? Anybody have any questions you'd like to ask? Yeah, we can go ahead. Um, maybe if you wanted to start us off with, you know, what exercises do you do on like a daily basis just to prep your voice um, or before you start singing a song? Uh, before I start singing uh, a song, I, I do some warm ups. Um, it, it also depends on what I'm singing uh, because I sing a wide, a variety of so of uh, genres like like opera or or the pop. So um, if I'm singing opera, I would just go you know do some higher uh, warm ups like <laughs> and then I'll just uh, start doing and you know stuff like that and then if i'm just singing some more mellow uh, pop stuff then i start with more lower basic uh, warm ups like ah ah you know the three notes that we did and then the scale and um, nothing to to highlight like the the opera stuff you know if i were to sing opera no. yeah and when when you're singing the differences between you know regular pop songs or opera songs um, you know, what are like the different things you have to prepare for or the different stylistically, like the differences between them? Uh, well, for opera, um, opera is more strict uh, when it comes to pronunciation and breathing, uh, especially. So that's very important. And uh, you have to have um, a good accompanist or a good backtrack for th those types of songs. and. Um, and as for the pop, it's a little bit more casual, you know, you don't have to worry about proper pronunciation and it's a little, you know, different. Um, it took me a while to transition, but, um, and another thing that I do uh, for the pop, uh, cause sometimes, I guess it depends on the song. Uh, if I'm singing a pop song and if it's a little bit high, I try to control the the higher notes so it doesn't sound so classical <laughs> so uh, a lot of um the the crackling uh noises like the ah uh, i know it sounds that doesn't sound very nice but it, it actually does help so <laughs> yeah yeah and do you have any tips to like get started in either pop singing or opera like any artists you listen to to get started or any books you read uh i listen to everything um my one inspiration for the opera was uh, Maria Callas, uh, very, very amazing, uh, an amazing soprano. Um, and then there was also Andrea Bocelli, who in this, who, who's been a, an inspiration, and uh, Pavarotti, very like classic, um, classic. Uh, I think he was the the best, one of the best opera singers in the world. So. <laughs> And uh, as far as like the pop genre, I really do enjoy more of the old, uh, well, maybe not old, but I mean, they're still around, um, uh, Celine Dion and um, Whitney Houston, uh, who else has been uh, a favorite? Uh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I can't think. Yeah, more, more Celine Dion. Um, and lately, I've been listening to a lot of Adele. I know she's quite the, she's quite popular now with her new album. So, uh, you know, I also try to to um, keep with the trend. So, sing songs that uh, will, would interest uh, everybody, and try to keep, you know, um, keep with the popular songs. <laughs> Yeah, and on that idea of trends, you know, were, are there any trends that you're noticing right now um, or ones that were outdated and you may be, or any trends that were in particularly impactful for you or your music career? Um, not not uh, really, but uh, 
I mean, C Celine Dion is still around and she's still making some incredible music, but even though it's new, um, I, I still like the old, her old, her old, her old, her older stuff. Uh, and then there's even an Italian singer now that just comes to mind. Uh, she's still, uh, you know, performing and she's still in the music industry, but, you know, still producing new, you know, releasing new music. But again, I still like her, her old, or, you know, originals uh, work. So, but it, it, I mean, everybody has different tastes, so. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Kathy had a couple of questions, so I'll pass it off to her. Yeah, so um, what do you like most about being a singer? So would it be the performance, recording your own songs, writing them? Oh, all, all of it. All of it. I love it. I love it all. Um, being in their studio, though, uh, it is a lot of work um, for those who are, you know, who plan to do that. Uh, it is a lot of work because uh, you have to sing so many takes you sing the line, the, the one line a thousand times. <laughs> and then your voice gets so tired by the end of the, <laughs> but uh, it is a lot of fun. And I do love the performance uh, part of it as well. It's, um, it gives me, uh, uh, well, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Uh, it gives me a, a high uh, adrenaline. Uh, it gives me such a, you know, boost of energy. And then Seeing a live audience, which I hope I'll be able to do that soon, is just, it, it's uh, thrilling. It's very nice. So. Um, speaking of performance, do you get nervous while performing and how do you control that? Oh, yes. I still get nervous even after all these years. <laughs> um, uh, to control the nerves, I just, you know, I try to try to keep it off my mind and just breathe and uh relax and uh know that you know if you make a mistake just keep going don't stop don't make a face like oh, oh you know just keep going and i've had some incidences where i did i was singing and the the track went off it, it stopped and um but it, it was the, the the system at the venue and it stopped but i just kept going <laughs> So, and, uh, and that made me nervous. I was just like in my head, even though I'm singing, I'm like, oh no, what just happened? But I'm still singing. <laughs> so yeah, just keep going and uh, breathe and everything is going to turn out amazing. That's really good advice. No, I can't imagine that sounds so scary. Um, <laughs> what do you think was the best advice you ever got from someone else about singing? best advice uh is just keep going don't stop D um uh and don't d don't give up i mean being a an independent artist is hard believe you know believe me it's not all it's not always easy and uh but just keep going and uh someday somehow it, it's gonna you know things are gonna happen and if one gig or if one song falls through believe me from experience it's happened to me that that means that there's something else better for you so. yeah thank you um did anyone else have any questions uh, i have a question actually um Hi. so you talked about how you went into like business when you went off to university so i was just wondering um in terms of career, if someone has a passion in music, for example, would you recommend that they like, you know, drop everything and go study music? Or would it be better to have like a stable kind of backup plan and then, you know, start music as a hobby maybe? And then, you know. Uh... No, drop everything and go to music. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that all depends. Um, uh, I regret that I didn't do that. I, I regret that I didn't drop everything and uh, and go into music, but um, I mean, things happen for you know a reason. But you have to listen to your listen to your heart. And if if you're passionate about music, if you're passionate about uh, um, uh, becoming a an artist, a pa a painter, or 
a doctor or, you know, whatever field, I, I would say just, you know, go for it. And then um, you'll somehow, some way make it work. Great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, um, and also I was wondering, you know, you were talking about the process of making a, a recording and how many takes it takes. So in your experience with Crying to the Moon, could you walk us through maybe how long that took or how you got started with that idea? Uh, well, I have an amazing producer and he uh, knew the, the, the songwriter uh, of this song and um, as soon as I listened to the demo of it, I, I, I wanted to do it right away. I could picture myself, you know, performing the song on stage and, um, and we started recording this in March, just before the lockdown. And uh, it, it was a lot of work. I was at the studio for pretty much the whole day. <laughs> and um, it took a lot of, uh, it took it was a lot of takes and then some parts were easy you know of the song and then i remember there was one part of the bridge of the song i was having a hard time with but uh we actually had to stop take a break because i was getting tired and uh and you know just take five and uh and then start back so it's uh it's quite the process <laughs> yeah um and in terms of, you know, that was what you worked on at the start of the pandemic. But are you working on anything now or do you plan, have big plans for the future? Uh, always. Um, <laughs> um, I am, like I said at the beginning, uh, I, I, I recorded my first uh, EP uh, 20 years ago. So I have a, a special project of that is coming up uh, soon. Uh, I'm hoping early spring. And uh, I've also been working on some uh, original songs that I uh, wrote, and I hope to uh, to start working on those uh, very soon once I'm able to go back to the studio. Yeah, well, best of luck with all of that. Um, Thank you. And, I was and then, uh, another goal of mine is to do a live show, and fingers crossed, uh, hopefully we can. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was wondering if anyone else had any questions for Lisa. Oh, I have one. That's okay. Uh, I want to ask Eliza because I just googled you. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so it turns out you've got like thirty-five thousand Spotify listeners, which is pretty nuts for an independent artist. So I'm wondering, uh, how do you like in terms of like the marketing side of things? How do you get yourself and your music out there? What do you do to to create your fans uh, and fan base? Social media, like being on Instagram and. Uh, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter uh, has been has been a great help. Uh, I love social media um, and also connecting with other artists. Um, I got involved uh, getting involved with the community um, with open mics and, uh, uh, all, you know, community events uh, helped a lot. And um, also connecting with local uh, radio stations. Uh, as well, because once you connect with them, they you give them all your um, music and and socials, and then that's when people start searching and start listening. So um, it, it it is a lot of work, and sometimes you have to actually pay for some marketing. But I mean, it's all up to the artist if they choose to do that or not. So yeah, yeah. Um, anyone else? Yeah, if I could ask a question, um, what would you say your advice is to the average person to sing better if they're like singing happy birthday? Like how can an average person make it sound better? Uh, how can they make like singing happy birthday? <laughs> or just like well, singing um, in general, yeah. <laughs> Well, lots of, you could just um, breathe and not just be careful not to push through your, uh, you know, throat uh, and, or sing through your nose and just, you know, breathe. The breathing, it all comes from your, you know, diaphragm. So if you're singing and make sure you start on a key that's comfortable for you. Cause I know sometimes a lot of family gatherings I've been to, everyone singing one higher or lower and <laughs> so, uh, 
so yeah, just sing at a comfortable key that you're good at. So, so happy birthday to you. Yeah, and then you just go from there. <laughs> So yeah, maybe you could just practice beforehand, if, you know, a few minutes before you start singing and then go from there. <laughs> yeah, and do you have any tips for songwriting as well? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not that, uh, uh, I don't know, how, how can I say, I'm not that great at, at it, I guess, but I'm, I'm learning as I'm going along uh, and I am working with someone who's helping me, but tips I got from the workshops I've attended uh, uh, is to listen to other songs that you like or that you or you enjoy uh, and get some inspiration from that and even um, watching tv shows or um, or a movie a favorite movie you know uh, you can pick up different lines that uh you know from there that inspire you and uh and w whatever like it's like writing a, a diary if any if anybody still writes a diary uh, you know you write it's all your thoughts on paper and and then you can just uh once you get all that done uh you can slowly put it put a melody uh to it and it, it's uh it, it it's amazing it's an amazing experience so yeah i think we're good for like one last question from anyone um and then we can move on if not that's all right too um yeah so i can go back to sharing my screen and then it will bring us to our little closing remarks um and once again, you know, thank you so much, Eliza, for sharing all of your tips. And uh, you're your most welcome. Today. I hope it was all helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and once again, for everyone that's here, you know, thank you so much uh, for attending our little workshop today. Um, it's Saturday morning, so I'm sure a lot of you guys were busy or you wanted to get some rest after school yesterday. But you know, we really appreciate it. Um, and I, you know, Eliza, did you have any other, you know, closing remarks um, or anything you wanted to share? Last minute advice for anyone? Just um, do what makes you happy. And uh, because n no one could make you uh, happy than yourself. And if people don't uh, support you, then you don't need them. Um, just, you know, stick to those who, who support you and, uh, and will help you, you know, make your dreams come true. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Um, and if everyone is, you know, interested in, learning more about Eliza, uh, Eliza's music, um, you can check her out on Instagram at Eliza Rose Official, or all of her music is on Spotify as well. And if you are in also interested in learning more about Ink Movement and what we do, we're on Instagram at Ink Movement Mississauga or www.inkmovement.org.